Okay, so we can see here in our question that the 3D graphic is a pillar from a wall. It shows the plan, the elevation. We need to do true isometric. So see it says true isometric of the pillar using an axonometric planes. So we know our axonometric planes are going to look something like this. And because it's isometric, we also know that each angle inside is going to be equal. Okay, so ISO means one, so they all share the same angle. So this is 360 divided by 3 is going to be 120, 120, and 120. Okay, so representing that, we can see here, we have our vertical plane. Okay, we have our horizontal plane, and we have our end vertical plane. Okay, so where are two, so one of our principles, where are two planes, any two planes meet, it's represented by a line. Okay, so where the vertical plane meets the end vertical plane, it's represented as a vertical line. Okay, where the vertical plane meets the horizontal plane, it's represented as a line. So the end vertical plane meets the horizontal plane is also represented as a line. So that's what we're getting in axonometric. We're getting our planes of reference. So there's our axonometric axis, and all these are planes of reference that's tilted up in a different view. So we can represent our object. So the first thing we need to do is start off setting up our planes. So I've started already. So my first plane here, my, sorry, my first axis is going to be where the vertical plane meets the end vertical plane. And that has to be vertical. So the first thing we do is set it up. Make sure it's vertical. Okay, it doesn't matter how big it is at the minute, just don't make it too small. So I've color coded it blue and blue so you can see there and there. Then we know if we use our protractor, the projector inside here, we're going to measure 120 and mark it. So in here we have 120 degrees and we're going to mark that and then we're going to bring it out. So the pink one here is the vertical plane intersecting with the horizontal plane and then the same thing then we have 120 from this side and we have 120 here because it's isometric they all share the same angle. I think everybody's okay with that so we just in case you're not, that was just 120 and we've marked it and we've brought a line through. So I've kept them all colour coded so we can view it the same as if it was our planes of reference. Okay, so we know then we're going to take our axonometric plane and we're going to stick it in here. We're going to end up with an equilateral because it's isometric. We're going to end up with an equilateral triangle. Okay, so we're axonometric plane. Okay, so it is an equilateral triangle, so all sides are going to be equal. So we need to draw that in. So the first thing we need to do is if your page is set up properly, it's going to be horizontal. Okay. But more importantly, it has to be perpendicular. So the bottom edge here has to be perpendicular with this line of intersection. So we bring it down, make sure it's perpendicular. Okay, from to where it meets the two axes. That's no problem. So about 100 mil should be fine. So where that point meets here, and that point meets here, we have the length of one side of our equilateral triangle. Okay. So we could take it and swing it with our compass if we wanted to, but the way we're going to do it is we look along here, along our axis, and this has got to be perpendicular. So this, this edge has to be perpendicular to that. So we need to set that up. There, using our sliding set squares, make sure it's perpendicular. Move it a little bit higher because it's short. Perpendicular to that. Draw a line up. Okay, where that touches here now is going, that's perpendicular. And that point there is going to go back to that point here. Which will make this line here perpendicular also. So that's the most important part of the axonometric plane. It has to be set up correctly. If you can set that much up, it doesn't matter if you change the angles. If it's diametric or trimetric, we'd have no problem setting up the question. Okay, so once that's happened, we're going to project out our 
we need an elevation in the question here. We need an elevation and we need a plan. So the first thing we're going to do is we look at the elevation and the plan. So how we project them out. So the first thing we're going to do is look along here. So if I come down here and look along along this point here, I will see these two parallel. The edges have to be parallel. So we set it up using our sliding set squares again. From that point, our line is parallel along that axis. So if I'm looking along here, okay, so if I come over here and I'm looking along here, I will see that point and that point parallel. So project line out lightly. Okay. And project this point out lightly. Okay, so we've projected two of them out. This point, this line here, is parallel to this line, is parallel to that line. I think everyone's okay with that. So we'll just roughly measure out 80. Just measure out, or even, yeah, we'll measure out 80. Here, and measure out 80 on the other side. Okay, so whatever you measure on one side, you have to measure on the other. And we will draw that line there. So this line here, is representing the true length, so TL, true length of this edge, that edge here, of true length of the edge of axonometric plane. Okay. So the next thing we need to do to that next thing we need to do that is bisect it to find the center point. I'm going to bisect it to get the center point. So remember, bisect the line, swing an arc from both sides. Ready to meet. Shine them back together. Ready to intersect here. This will be your center point. So that will give me my center point and my radius. I'm going to swing an arc. So probably this way would be easier to see. Swing an arc then from there to there. So that'll give you the arc. So if we continue along this line here, where it touches the semicircle, we will join back from here. So I'm going to use the blue line through that from there to there, and then the pink line from there to there. Okay. So you can see, if we look in here, we will see the vertical plane. So, you can see in our sketch, we look in here, we will see our vertical plane. That's represented, a blue line here and the pink line here as our axis. So I've kept the color coded so people can understand that. So this is a portion, okay, it's just some, a portion of the VP, so the vertical plane, it's a portion of the vertical plane. So we need to do the same thing now in plan. So I'm just going to tip this slightly. So in plan we do the exact same thing. We know that's vertical so we can use our T square and our Z squares together. So if we get a look along here, along that point, we have to project everything parallel to that. So this is going to be parallel down here. That's going to be parallel down here. So we've measured on 8 and the other one so we'll keep it the same. About 80 there, so make sure it's the exact same on both sides. Okay. Draw that line here. Okay, so that line now will represent the true length of this portion of the axonometric plane. So that edge there, that edge here, that edge here is the true length of the edge of axonometric plane. Okay, if you can start understanding this, you have no problem completing the questions. Okay, so we just need to do the exact same thing, so we need to bisect this angle here, or sorry, bisect this line, apologies, bisect that line there, here and here, and join it back together. Okay, find the center point, we're going to swing an arc, 
from that center point using the compass. So always when you have it set up, double check both sides, make sure you have the exact center point. Okay, so there's that arc there. We project this line down. Continue it down. So where it touches, where it touches the semicircle, we're going to see a portion of the horizontal plane. So looking down there, we will, when we're looking down, we will see the portion of the horizontal plane. So we're looking straight down, we're going to see the pink axis. So where the VP meets the HP and then the green axis where the inverted plane meets the horizontal plane. So we're going to join them back together. I'm going to keep the colours on it. I hope it helps. Okay, so this here, this in here is a portion of the horizontal plane. Okay, so that's part portion of the horizontal plane. Okay, so that's how you set up the question. That's the first thing we need to do. Okay, I'm going to just put that up, and then I will come back and we will solve we'll solve the question in the next video.